This is Diana Farrell of Lyric Opera Orange County saying welcome back to our Off Book series where we invite professionals in the opera world to have candid conversations about what it's really like in the industry today and advise young singers beginning their own careers. I would like to take this moment to introduce our next featured artist, Ms. Kara Chowning, a wonderful pianist and vocal coach. Kara has worked at a number of universities and conservatories around the country, not to mention being involved in the numerous festivals and young artist programs. She is, in addition to her musical talents, a yoga instructor as well as a specialist in breath work. Kara stopped by to offer a master class of sorts and a one-on-one -on -one coaching with local singer, mezzo-soprano Reagan Shrum and show her how this breath work can be applied to inspire freshness and authenticity and uh, excitement maybe in an old piece of music and to carry it with you into the next step of your career. We hope you enjoy this episode and make sure you tune in and check out Kara's blog post at www.lyricoperaoc.org slash off book. Hi, my name is Ray Shrum, and today I'm going to be singing Que fais-tu, Blanche Tourtoile from Romeo and Juliet by Charles Gounod. Thank you. 
<laughs> it's ready to go again. <laughs> really lots of wonderful singing and I feel like you're totally um, engaged with this aria. This is um, an old friend. Yes, yeah, I've had this for a long time. <laughs> Right, a long time. Do you still feel um, Do you still feel fresh and excited to sing it? Um, you know, it's yes and no. I mean, I think that there's always new, um, you know, new ways to kind of think about the character or new things I can approach. But um, you know, at at some point, it gets hard to keep it fresh. I think, and it mm -hmm. starts to uh, become a little bit stale. I think I'm kind of in that place with this piece. <laughs> Let's see if we can bring a little bit of fresh life into it, and then maybe we'll also have time to sing something else today. Um, so right away, tell me about this uh, this guy. <laughs> um, okay, so Stefano is a little, uh, I think, like messenger boy for the most part. Exact age, I'm not completely sure, but I'm going to guess like early teens, like maybe like 14, 15-ish. Um, he is energetic, <laughs> um, and very much, so in this, in this piece, he's basically has been looking for his master. He says at the beginning, he's like, I can't find him anywhere. Um, and he's at the house of the Capulets and basically is kind of taunting them in this mm -hmm. song. Um, you know, the guards are all up there. So, uh, a lot of playful energy in this piece. Yes. Um, yes. And, you know, if it were staged, I've seen this staged so many different ways, right? Lots of, it's very active often, right? Because actually, do you know, is Stefano in the real Romeo and Juliet? No, he's not. Yes, it's completely <laughs> a made-up character, right, that Guno brought in to really help propel the drama, right, in, in the opera. So that thing that you said about taunting, right, is it's to bring about the duel, right, later on. So I think that's really key, sort of this little, like, <laughs> you know, and, and that and that teenage, uh um bravado right that's yeah. that's always a thing and and it kind of goes hand in hand with the pants roll right so that's always a lot of fun so okay one of the things i hear you do really well we'll talk about a lot of different things is um i like your sense of line and legato and that you're flowing through you're using your breath really nicely um do you feel pretty grounded when you sing this you feel like you're in your body and on your breath Consistently. For the most part, um, yeah, I do. I think that this piece, because it's old, not only do I struggle a little bit with keeping the character fresh, but also, you know, vocally sometimes ha old habits come back. And one of my old habits was not having enough breath support. Um, so it's something that I am constantly having to like check in with when I sing this piece. Yeah, absolutely. So like I heard it sneak in occasionally, you know, like or maybe the vibrato would be uneven, right? Which just signifies something isn't quite going ideally right it's occasional with you on this i really think that that you sing the melismas and the moving parts i love how your your voice handles that it's really lovely so actually i'd love to dig in a little bit with the rest it because i think there are some old habits in the rest it dramatically and like just with the with with the tying of breath so you know i coach singers but I'm also like in yoga and, and breath instructor. So like, I'm not gonna make you do any breath stuff particularly today, but I want us to think if we can just really imagine like the, you know, that the length, that the breath is our gift, okay? So that what are the things it can do for us um, as a singer? So like pure nuts and bolts, but it, it just, it allows us to sing, right? It allows us to carry that phrase and gives us the air to, you know, to make sound and to sustain things, to sustain that sound. So that's kind of the first, duh, right? <laughs> and then, but you know, like the other thing is, what else can breath do for us when we um, want to change the mood, change our intention, inhale our um, our action that's coming next, right? It's a it's an it's a tool for that. It's also a really great gift to like when you do get into trouble and a phrase doesn't work so well right or in your head right um it with you know that next inhalation you you can breathe in something totally different and you know be in a completely different sound universe if you will right you know in terms of your technique and your space and all of that so it can be a grounding um tool also 
right? And, um, and so, and then just other nuts and bolts of singing, you can use that breath to inhale what? Like your vowel, your color, right? The shape inside of your mouth. So when it comes to something that's old and stale, I'd love us to consider each of these breath moments and see if we can infuse the breath into something that will energize and excite you and, and or focus you. So we have an old piece that maybe there's some places we need to think about solving an old technical issue. Maybe there's something that we need to infuse some excitement. So like we need to, what kind of verbs could we inhale for that phrase to, to get your, your change of direction or your intention, your action. And then also just, um, just nuts and bolts of breathing through a vowel. So, um, I'm sure that you have your word for word and you know, if it's an old piece, you know, everything about what you're singing. So if you were to speak that phrase, can you show me, can you try to just, just speak it with an inflected kind of pitchy sort of tone? I'm yeah. curious to know what words you think are the most important, just from a textual. Okay. Great. So I did not get depuis. I got de puisier, right? You went through the phrase, right? But when you sang it, I got de puisier. <laughs> so, which is a completely natural thing, right? And probably if you work with great singers and great coaches, you've probably been told that all the little notes matter and those first notes, right? We want you to resonate and breathe on. So yes, I absolutely want all of that, but I also want you to utilize the structure and the flow of the language and the, and the phrasing in this in this recit. Um, but let's continue with the next one. How would you, what do you think is important in the next little phraselet? Okay. Est-il encore chez vous, mes seigneurs capulets? So we want, I heard vous. Mm -hmm. What else? Miss, I think mes seigneurs, like, because he's kind of mocking them. I mean, you know, he's also, he's not like just old. saying, yeah. So it's um, like, he chooses to say mes seigneurs, right? Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. And what about, um, Okay, and then the next one. Great, and you chose, I heard, digne, yeah, yeah, because what does that mean? That means like um, like worthy or dignified. Great, and then it also has a musical gesture, right? A turn, and it's, it's a little bit longer in the phrase, so I think that's a good choice. And then the next continuation of that phrase, right? À ma voix ce matin, oserons reparaître. Okay, and important things there. Um, to my voice, ma voix. Yes. And then um, reparaître means like to reappear. So Definitely. That's kind of like a call to action, I think, in that phrase. Oh, a call to action. I love it. We love those. Okay, and ce, what's ce matin? Um, sorry, oh, in the morning. Yeah, and... Is there any specificity to the morning? Um, so, I guess, I mean, he's been searching and yes. he comes here to them and he says, like, well, maybe this morning. Yes. You guys yes. will actually this, appear. You will actually yeah. uh -huh. yes. So, yes. So, so, I heard you sort of do au revoir ce matin. Those, so, I think this is a chance where you can actually go for the less obvious. So like, à ma voix, I like ma voix, but like, ce matin, right? That's okay. gonna carry you through the gesture, right? And help your breath keep moving. Okay. If you can yeah. sort of sing through that little one. On se roll, and then repair, and you gotta have a beautiful space for the E natural, of course. So, and then, what about the pacing of this? It's it's a kind of a mix, right? Of accompaniado and not. Yeah. So, <laughs> Where do you have the most flexibility? I mean, to be honest, it's a lot harder to do with a recorded accompaniment than it is when the pianist just follows me. Oh, I know, I know. So I don't even care if you're with your track because- Yeah, I know, I try I not know, to. We all know rest with such a team with tracks is kind of silly. So I actually want you to sing it and let's just not even worry about the track until we get to the aria proper. So you can actually, we can actually think about breathing in for the, for the gesture, for the phrase, and the music, and then 
maybe just making sure that we get the spin and the sh direction through the line and you don't have to worry about lining up because I know you, we know you can, you did it beautifully. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, absolutely. Okay. So starting from the beginning of the recipe, would you be able to give me that G? Sorry. I absolutely can. Great. That's like the first two things, right? Mm -hmm. Exclamation point after the first phrase, question mark after the second one. So how can you inhale? What can you inhale to show us those? This is the first thing you sing. You get this really long sort of like interlude prelude, right? To, to establish your presence, right? At the top of the act when this happens. Why? Why do poesia? Why is that the first thing? Can you, can you inhale and show us what, what could be your, some verbs or some ideas that you use? I would think like, like an exasperated kind of sigh because he's been going all over town trying to find. Right. So how about sigh? I love that. That also implies that like, it's an impulse too, right? With how that breath is going to escape you as you, as you say and sing these, these words. So let's try that. Sigh. Inhale. Sigh. Wow, the first phrase was completely different than yeah. you sang the first time. So I think that works for you. And um, we, we don't have time to go through every single phrase, but was it more fun to do it that way? No, I definitely, I think it really adds... Um... Because, you know, conceptually, I know what he's saying. Of course. Like what the general feeling is, but that breath kind of gives, it makes each phrase new, right? Um, like I felt like I was kind of singing it for the first time. Yes, that's exactly what we want. And I think when you and I first met, you talked about wanting to feel uh, more spontaneity in your singing. And I think this is something that can help you to do that. Yes. So when you, I mean, it was like, it was a completely different sound. It was a completely different musical gesture and it worked so much better for the French also. <laughs> I didn't even have to say, I mean, right. You know, you figured it out. You did it yourself. So, so the first one is sigh, but what's the Etienne encore? What's that one? Um, let's see. I think. Maybe for this one, um, it's like a little more teasing. So I would think kind of like on the breath in, he's really thinking, okay, I'm about to, I'm about to mess with these people. You know? Right. So what could it be? Tease. Um, you know what? The, the thesaurus is your friend too, as you go through this, because then you can have options and it doesn't have to be the same one necessarily every time. Although, um, you might find that actually works for you, but but since you're since it's, it's an old piece and you're you're also looking for new life and invigorating the piece and spontaneity, if you have options, then you know you know then like the situation, you can decide to breathe what it needs to be because you have the options and it can be then it can be something you've done and tried or it can be something new, right? That you've also thought about and tried, but then the intention is there and it feels new and you feel more engaged and. By doing all of that, it's amazing that we actually get on our breath and we actually sing better and freer. It's just amazing how those things go hand in hand. Okay, so let's try then. Let's try one more time with the the um, sigh and then <gasps> tease. Okay. Right? And yeah. <laughs> Great. Love it. Now, my only question is, why do you stop your sound on hier before je? Depuis hier, je cherche. A... Were you, does, do you think it needs to be that way? I have a reason why. I'm yeah, just... I think it's, a, let's go for longer phrases. Let's just try a longer phrase because that's what's written, right? Yeah. Depuis hier, je cherche, je cherche, right? Yeah. So again, sigh, but make sure that the, that the long notes still that there's some kind of flow and wiggle going through them. Okay. 
Okay, so for me, your voice is way more spinny, way more engaged and beautiful even. And I got a really clear, I got really clear acting choices, which is a bonus. Okay. And I got... And I got like the distress of the text much more too. De yeah, je cherche. That was great. Yeah, I love that. Okay, so now going on, voyons un peu. What's happening here? What can we, how can we use this breath idea? Um, let's see. I think that this one is a little more like plotting, you know, because he's like, oh, let's see if he'll come out. Um, but he's thinking about, you know, what would happen, I guess, or... Um, yeah, I don't know, thinking about how he's going to proceed, I guess. So a little bit of plotting going on here. P-L-O-T? T-T, yeah. As in, as in to plot? Plot, yeah. Ah, okay, or to deceive or yeah. to, uh, I mean, so, yeah, okay. Choose, choose something and see how that feels. Now, this is also an E-flat, so it also it needs to, your inhalation, wah, right? You want to be ready for that that vowel as you breathe through that shape in your mouth too. Okay. And get to the vowel really fast. Gotcha, could you give me that E flat please? Yes ma'am. Right, because I mean, unless you want to change it, unless you think I'm of Wasimatan is completely unrelated. There, I think would work for the whole. Okay, great. Then let's try. And then the one last thing is I. So this is is it an old habit for you to stop on notes? Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. That's great. So let's see if we can if we can tie this together with the, with this idea of breath and flow, and that we're gonna also now let's go back to the basics. Inhale, exhale, it's one breath impulse, right? So, right? The pull is gonna lead us to, or the idea that every little note is gonna be energizing some way, either increasing energy or lowering energy to the next note. You can use whichever analogy works for you. But so, but what we don't want is for, for the energy to drop, right? Just because all of a sudden, you don't have to do anything for uh, for an eighth note <laughs> yeah? yeah so can you think about uh so it, do you like the idea to plot to deceive what's your verb um yeah i think i'm going to stick with that one for now i might you know go back through with my thesaurus later but totally fine totally fine so plot for voyon and then you want a new breath impulse on amavoi so what do you want that to be No right or wrong it's just all things to play with yeah, no. and to give you new ideas it's, it's very similar to teasing i think but with okay. a call to action this time like I, I mentioned before so i'm trying to think of a insight maybe insight insight uh, yeah insight. that would that work because because i want to turn call to action into something that you can you can do yes you want to give a call to action but that's not that's a lot that's not a very strong verb to like inhale, right? But if you think insight, oh yeah, come on, right? Then that's something you can do and show, right? In that, in that fast inhalation. Gotcha. Okay. So let's, let's try from voyant and then we'll go back and do the whole rest it and then, and then we'll do some other things and you can like continue to play with this. But I think it's particularly helpful in moments, passages like this. Uh -huh. So from voyant, we're going to plot and then we're going to incite. I need to write these down. I'm going to leave. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I should too. <laughs> plot and then incite. Okay. Uh, that E flat is. And then technically we might have needed a third one, but <laughs> so 
since you observed that rest so nicely. But but it can just carry through because you're not really, it's not a humongous breath there, right? Yeah, good. Okay, how does this feel? Does it feel more engaged? Does it feel engaged in a new way? Yeah, it feels less like I am doing what I need to do, less robotic. <laughs> more organic, perhaps, less robotic, more organic. And it certainly looks that way to us. It's funny, you know, I, as a pianist, right, and a aspiring coach, you know, I spent so many uh, years playing in other people's studios and other people's classes, right? So really, I just absorbed, you know, all these amazing ideas from from the amazing colleagues I've gotten to work with over, you know, a, the time so far. And I, the thing I, I had a hard time buying into and understanding, and I know, I know the students did too, was that sometimes the most planned out performances that are specific or at least that we've really done the digging in and like thought about these things read and feel in the end the most organic and it's sort of a funny thing to think about it because we all want spontaneity right and I think that actually doing this you will give yourself more tools in your toolbox to then try something new if it feels if you're feeling it that day right you know what I mean you can try a different verb you can inhale a different um you know feeling um color shift in what you want to do right but you will have tried out so many things and you'll be comfortable with the process and the idea that it's then it just becomes an extension of 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 the character right and what you're singing about and what you want why you're singing it mm -hmm. awesome so let's just do the rest of it now with each of see if we can get all of these things see if you can just use that breath to um to inform that phrase um dramatically and musically and just let it go keep it flowing so i don't want you to hold anything okay you know, right like like keep it moving yeah here's your you need a what pitch a g that feel better i think i need a little more time working with the different verbs but it seems now i like i'm looking at this and i've had it for so many years and now it seems like there's so much more i have to work with awesome and that's that's the goal so I mean, with, yeah infuse the breath with some different yes 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 and i think as you start to to revisit this you know maybe like more phrase by phrase you can think about if you can notice when you listen back do you I think it's a great idea to record yourself when you practice or to pay attention to things. Um, like, so when you do stop on things, make sure that it is a real choice and not just a default, you know? Like when we learn things younger in life, sometimes we have, you know, we, we uh, the, our brain can't think through the French fast enough and you certainly can now. So I think some of those stops are just, I think they're just defaults from, from before, you know? Um, and so really I thought, I thought it's all feeling much more natural and I feel like actually with your your body was a lot more specific just by default we didn't even talk about that <laughs> so that's exciting okay